Hey family, I just want to tell you that every day we have a choice. Every day the sun comes up and every evening the sun goes down. It's just a reminder that we each have a choice. We can choose between light or we can choose between darkness. We can choose the light of God and the everything that goes with it or we can choose to be consumed with the present darkness that is surrounding surrounding this world as we see it today. These are for sure dark days in very dark times. The days of sorrow are here. Many are being crushed and many are hurting deep inside. Many are feeling they have been left with no hope. I have always tried my best to look at all disappointments more like divine appointments. Not disappointment, but appointment. I have tried to look at those times in such a way that this was my appointment to begin the next phase of my life that God had ordained just for me. I try to always remember, no matter what, that all things are working together for my good. And the same applies to you. I just want to remind the body of Christ that praise for the Most High God is a powerful approach we can take when everything seems to be falling apart. Your weapon is the melody of praise that we are lifting up to the Lord. When we feel like we are surrounded on every side, let's all try to remember that we're actually surrounded by God. When the cares of this world seem to surround us, always run to the rock that is higher than we are. I'm reminded of a story in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13 and verses uh, 10 through 17, we, we find a woman who had been been over double for 18 years, which meant she wasn't able to stand up straight at all. Uh, verse, one, verse 10 says, One Sabbath day as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. This particular day was on their worship day. It was a Sabbath day. It didn't matter to this woman, no matter her pain, no matter her affliction. This woman found time to worship her God. Uh, from the scriptures, we find that the woman did not approach Jesus, but that it was Jesus that approached her. And he said, dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Glory to God. Maybe you have felt like I have for many times that you feel like no one special. I just want to remind you that if you're called by God's name, you are somebody special to God. The turmoil we see in the world today is extremely real. Uh, there's mayhem, there's uh, disruption, there's chaos, there's looting, there's killing, there's everything imaginable. It's just a sign telling God's people that we're getting ready to rapture out of here. We're getting ready to rapture out of here. Just like this woman, she, she wasn't begging for anything. She was just merely doing what she loved to do. And that was to worship her God. That's one thing I've always tried to do, and it's not easy. This thing called life is definitely not easy. Not easy at all. Uh, you say, well, that, that's easy for you to say, Brother Steve. Well, I'm actually a man that has been at death's door. I am a man that has lost everything that anyone could ever have in this world. When I married Susie, I had probably four or five boxes to my name. 
that was it. All other had been lost. And, you know, so many of us are feeling hopeless, and feeling like we can't go on. We feel like we've got to face another day. You're so ready to go to heaven. God has that appointed day. Oh, glory to God. God has that appointed day set in stone, and it will come when he gives the command. For now, let's allow the Most High God to weigh the mountains that stand before us. In just a moment of time, Jesus can touch us, and everything will change. Many religious people merely follow tradition. They will worship God with their lips, but their hearts are far from it. This particular woman was one who worshiped God in spirit and in truth. No matter what this woman, oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Mm. No matter what this woman was feeling or how bad she was hurting, no matter what she was going through, she found time to go praise her God. Brothers and sisters, dear family, I want you to praise the Lord God Almighty each and every day, amen? Find time to worship the Most High God. When Jesus was in the garden, he said, Father, if in any way possible, if this cup could pass by me, but not my will, but your will be done. I, I don't understand the ways of God. I know some days are good and some days are not good, amen? In Ephesians chapter six, it says, when the evil day comes, we gotta stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It means evil days are gonna come. And believe you me, the evil day has come in this, this day and time, amen? And because this Jesus is getting ready to come. Glory to God. But no matter what, this woman prays God, and that's what I want us to do. And God is telling me to tell you, do not be afraid. Do not worry. God is able to care for everything you have ever dedicated to him. In Luke chapter five, uh, let's see what the disciples were doing. In Luke chapter five, verses one through seven, it says, one day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, a great crowd, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said, Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. And this time their nets were so full of fish they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Glory to God in the highest. I just want each of you to take note. These fishermen allowed Jesus to sit in their boat and preach the word of God. They dedicated their boat for the cause of Jesus. And if you will think about it, these boats were commercial boats. These men were fishermen. They made their living by fishing. And uh, they more or less dedicated their business to God, amen? And as a result of having dedicated their business to God, the overflow, glory to God, the overflow, the overflow came. Maybe you're in need of joy in this hour. God is saying, launch back out into the deep, let down your nets and get ready to receive. Oh, glory to God, God, joy cometh in the morning, amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God in advance. The people of Israel marched around Jericho. They, they, they let out a great shout. 
you know, and, and the walls came tumbling down. They, they shouted a shout of praise before the victory was won. Brothers and sisters, I think you should start practicing shouting now because you're going to need to practice because it's not going to be too many more days from now. I don't know when the rapture is, but when we meet the Lord in the air, there's going to be shouts, shouts of praise. So you might as well start getting your your, your shouting shoes on now. Amen. Glory to God. And I just want you to remember, 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 and never forget the next time you feel surrounded, just see yourself surrounded by God. Dedicate everything you had to the Most High. Dedicate everything you had to the Most High God. You dedicate your life, your your family, your, your business, your finances, your your love, your everything, your everything. And find time to worship God. Find time to spend time in God's Word and then go and worship Him. Glory to God. That's what we do. We worship the Most High God. Sometimes it's not easy to lift up a praise when everything's not going well. I totally understand. I know I've been there. I've done that. But fake it till you make it if you have to. I've done that many times, amen. But this is how I fight my battles. Like Paul and Silas, been beaten and, and ridiculed and ever spat on everything else. They sat in the, in the lower parts of the dungeon and at the midnight hour they were praising God and the walls began to shake. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you the truth. I believe with all my heart that when the rapture takes place, the very ground beneath your feet will rumble. Glory to God in the highest. Jesus is coming. The devil wants you to be discouraged, downhearted, said nothing's going to work for you. I rebuke that devil in Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus against everything coming against you. We will pray for you. We will continue to pray for you every day. Just keep your hope alive. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. Spark out a, a shout of praise. Just strike a spark. Strike a spark of praise over the kindling of God's promises. Glory to God and just magnify the name of the Lord. We should be overjoyed and cheering at this point because our King is at the door and we are about to go home. I want to tell you that my wife and I, we love you, we pray for you, and we will definitely be seeing you in the clouds of glory, not too many, too much longer from now, amen? God bless you, we love you, and Maranatha.